So my dear friends, once again, I humbly welcome you here in this presentation today. Yesterday, we studied the basic principles of drama and studied a restoration drama, Elizabethan's drama. In today's presentation, we are going to study in detail about modern drama. So. I heartily welcome you once again. I am Dr. Atul Suryavamshi, MM College Pasora, District Jalgaon of Maharashtra State. So thank you very much for being with me. So here in this presentation, especially with the special concern with the modern drama we are dealing with here. So let's begin without wasting the time. So what exactly we mean by the term modern drama? It is the period before postmodernism during the First World War. Modern drama is essentially a drama of ideas rather than action. So this is the salient feature of modern drama. That in present modern drama, you know, ideas are very important than action. Action is not important. Ideas are important. So note this point. Modern drama focuses on common people and everyday problem. So what happened in restoration and in Elizabethan's drama, the mostly the characters, they were from the elite class, high class, generally the nobleman, the king, okay, like this. But it is not the case here in modern drama. Most of the characters, they belong to the common life. Everyday problem has been presented in the modern drama and this is one of the selling features. The next is, Alienation, disconnection, realism, isolation from the life, aloneness of the human beings are the select themes presented in the modern drama. So these are the theme associated with the daily life. It is the day-to-day -day problems of the human beings that the modern drama deal with. So alienation, isolation, man's frustration is disconnected from the rest of the world realism are the select themes which have been focused in modern drama and these are the problems of common man Hendrik Ibsen the Norwegian playwright is widely known as the father of modern drama and we know his famous character Nora from the doll's house is quite popular in English literature. So I hope that you will not never forget this name Henry Gibson, the Norwegian playwright, who is widely known as the father of modern drama. So these are the preliminaries about modern drama. Let us turn towards the next slide here. Here is a list of the select modern dramatist who are popular in English literature, especially for their unique themes in modern drama. Let's begin with the father of modern drama, Hendrik Ibsen. His period is 1828 and he passed away from this world in 1906. The second important personality is Oscar Wilde, who born in 1854 and passed away from this world in the year 1900. The next man who is the recipient of the Nobel Prize in 1925 and widely known as the BBC scholar 
He worked in British Broadcasting Corporation, none other than George Bernard Shaw, was born in 1856 and died in 1950. His drama of ideas are quite popular in English literature. He is anti-romantic person and never allows almost his hero and heroines, they are separated from each other and they never meet. So G.B. Shaw is known as an anti-romantic personality in modern drama. The next literary person is Anton Chekhov, the Russian writer who born in 1860 and passed away from this world in 1904. The next person who again received Nobel Prize in 1932, John Galsworthy, born in 1867 and died in 1933. The next person who is quite popular in the modern English drama for writing the Sea Adventures, J.M. Singh. 1871 up to 1909 is the time period of James Singh. The next personality is Eugene O'Neill from America, was born in 1888 and passed away from this world in 1953. The next man who received Nobel Prize in 1948 for his superb contribution in poetry, Thomas Turns Eliot, means T.S. Eliot, was born in 1888 and died in 1965. So, the next person is Bertrand Bachet, born in 1898 and died in 1956. The next man is Samuel Bakit, was born in 1906 and died in 1989. Samuel Bakit again received a Nobel Prize for his super contribution in literature. He received it in 1969. Then the French writer Eugene Ian Maskow. Born in 1909 and up to 1994. Tennessee Williams, the American writer who is wide, widely popular for his drama Streetcar Named Desire, was born in 1911 and passed away from this world in 1983. The next person is Arthur Miller, was born in 1915 and passed away, died in 2005. The next literary person, dramatist Kingsley Meese. 1922-1995 is the time span of King's Lemmys. The next dramatist is John Osborne, born in 1929 and died in 1994. The next person who again received Nobel Prize in 2006 for his absurd writing, Harold Pinter, was born in 1930 and his time span is lasted up to 2008. The last person which has been mentioned here in this slide, who is quite popular for Gilden Burns and Rosencrantz and Gilden Burns are dead, none other than Tom Stoppard was born in 1937. So these are the select modern dramatists. I humbly request you to study all these dramatists in detail for the sake of examination. Collect as much information of all those dramatists. You know, this is merely a sample which I am going to present you. This is time-bound activity, as I told you already. So without wasting the time, let us turn towards the next slide here in the series and focus on the father of modern drama, Henrik Ibsen. So Henrik Ibsen is the great Norwegian dramatist of the 19th century, and he dominates the realistic drama. He brought realism in the drama. Now, drama does not depict unrealistic things. Drama before the writing of Henrik Ibsen were based on imagination, were based on somewhat the life of the elite people, upper class people. But after Henrik Ibsen, you know, the train, a new train was initiated in the writing. The common man's life has been presented in the drama. So, he developed modernist, realist, social and psychological dramas. So, his selected dramas are Pillars of Society in 1877, after that, A Doll's House, which was published in 1879, as I told you, Nora is the famous character from A Doll's House. The next is Ghost, 1881, An Enemy of the People 
was published in 1882 the wild duck 1884 the lady from the sea 1888 the master builder 1892 and when we date of i can 1899 so these are the select works of hendrik ibsen do not forget one thing that he is the father of modern drama the norwegian playwright hendrik ibsen remember this let us turn towards his famous work a doll's house which was published in 1879 so let's have a fleeting glance on the summary of this drama a doll's house is a three-act play about a housewife whose name is nora helma who becomes a disillusioned disappointed and dissatisfied with her husband she has always been a very domesticated lady throughout her whole life further nora always does what is best for her family all her life men have always had an upper hand in her matters whether it is her father or her husband torvel she gets a tangle in messy circumstances because of money she borrows from an ill reputed man cross tag for her husband now what happens you know nora's husband and crossed both try to control her in their own ways so a touch of feminism is also there she finally gets fed up all this and start questioning the foundation of everything she has always believed in eventually nora leaves her husband as she cannot handle the suffocation anymore and becomes an independent woman to explore herself so from this point of view my dear friends this is somewhat a feminist work for the very first time you know the norwegian playwright henrik ibsen why is the female problem through nora in doll's house and so is the reason this play a doll's house become quite popular in english literature in each examination you know a question may be asked on a doll's house so i request you to study it in detail without wasting the time let us turn towards the next slide here in this presentation the second important work of Henrik Ibsen is entitled as An Enemy of the People, which published in 1882. So what is the theme of this? An enemy of the people present the conflict, the tussle between Dr. Thomas Stockman, a medical officer in charge with inspecting the public bath and his brother. Peter Stockman, the doctor's older brother, the town's mayor, the chief constable, and the chairman of the bath committee, who was the corrupted person who indulges himself in illicit activities. So Thomas finds the water to be contaminated. When he revolts against the situation, he is declared as an enemy of the people, but in reality, it is not the doctor who is enemy of the people, it is the mayor who was the enemy of the people in real sense. So there is enmity between the two brothers, and this this these two brothers they symbolize the doctor symbolize goodness. And the constable, the chairman, the town's mayor symbolizes badness. So these are the conflict struggle between two opposing forces in the life. When he revolts against the situation, he is declared as the enemy of the people, the doctor. At the end of this play, Dr. Thomas Tarman decides to open a school so that he can teach future generation to think freely for themselves and fight against the corruption in politics. So remember the theme. This is innovative theme used in the drama for the very first time by Henry Ibsen. Corruption in politics. As it is well said in English. That power corrupts and absolute power corrupt. Absolutely. So an enemy of people 
is the best example of this where people use their power to get money from the people they try to control the activity of the people and this is the best example an enemy of the people so let us turn towards the next slide which will inform us about Oscar Wilde who was born in 1854 and lasted up to 1900 he is a famous irish dramatist famous for his importance of being earnest and the picture of dorian gray quite quite popular in english literature so his important works have been mentioned here the first lady windermere's fan in 1892 a woman of no importance 1893 an ideal husband 1895 an importance of being earnest which he published in 1895 So these are the notable works of Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was interested in living the light and the high life. So let's study in brief about his the importance of being earnest which he published in 1895. The importance of being earnest a trivial comedy for serious people which is the subtitle of this narrates the story of the two person two men jack what thing who is in love with the gondolin fair fax and algernon moncrief in love with the sicily cardi the two men deceiving those around them by using the name arnest while the word arnest means serious and sincere both couple marries happily at the end of the drama so it is the theme of love and romance which has been presented here by oscar wilde so this is innovative theme in modern drama let's proceed further to talk about george bernard shaw the bbc scholar was born in 1856 and died in 1950 an irish dramatist who worked in british broadcasting corporation he received nobel prize in literature in 1925 for his uh, drama of ideas bringing innovative technique in english drama he is widely known for his drama of ideas as i told you already so here is a list of his important work vidor's house the philanderer pigmabian saint john mrs warren's profession arms and the man candida caesar and cleopatra the apple cart man and superman are the select important dramas written by george bernard shaw so my dear friends i request you to study G.B. Shaw in detail because most of the questions are asked on G.B. Shaw. Let's study in brief about his best play, The Apple Cart, which published in 1929. To upset the apple cart is a term which means to spoil someone else carefully organized, well arranged plan. Okay. to upset the apple cart means to upset the other's plan this is the story of king magnus and he is a tussle with his prime minister named joseph proteus so king magnus has a beautiful beloved orinthia apart from his wife jemima king upsets joseph proteus plan to make him mere rubber stamp joseph proteus wants to control the activities of king magnus and want to make him a mere rubber stamp but king was very shrewd person he upset the apple cart of joseph proteus and this is the story of a political extravaganza 
so this is a drama of idea you know ideas are very popular and famous of gb shaw so concerning this apple card i want to mention you a single incident when king magnus goes to visit orinthia during interlude to offer a comic relief to the tension readers so this was the intention of the beautiful beloved orinthia she is under the assumption that king magnus should marry her you know this was the intention of orinthia king has already a wife as i told you her name was jemima and when she forced king magnus to marry king magnus this words are quite popular in english literature i request you to remember this words when orinthia insists him for the marriage king magnus says do not let us fall into the common consideration of expecting to become one flesh and one spirit every star has its own orbit and between it and its nearest neighbor there is not only power of attraction but also an infinite distance when the attraction becomes stronger than the distance they two do not come together they crash and ruin in the same way we must keep an infinite distance between us to avoid a disastrous collision because keeping the distance is the secret of good manners and without good manners human society is completely intolerable and impossible my dear friends from this dialogue from the apple card you can imagine the height of the noble winner george bernard shaw is anti romantic dramatist who never allow romance between the lover and be loved in his drama so king magnus is his mouthpiece who preach the value of chastity character here through apple card so this drama apple card is very much significant which focuses the utmost core values of the human life the second important work of gb shoys pigmalion so this is the story of henry higgins a professor of phonetics offers training of the speaking to a flower girl named eliza dolittle at the ambassador's ball you know eliza charms everyone with her diction and her language and higgins wins his bet it was the sole intention of henry Higgins to well verse Eliza in English especially in accent and an intonation and an English phonology and he succeeds in his mission so they do not come together at the end of the drama in Pygmalion as i told you gb shaw never allows this pygmalion is taken from the ancient theme of the greek word So this is one again notable work written by George Bernard Shaw. Let's proceed further to where is one important work Man and Superman. So Man and Superman is a Victorian era play in which a young woman and which well uses her attractiveness to manipulate John Tanner a highly intelligent social revolutionary into marrying her. Shaw believes in the conflict between man as a spiritual creator and woman as a guardian of the biological continuity of the human race. The play incorporates G.B. Shaw's concept of the life force and satirizes the relationship between the sexes, between man and Superman. So what is the life force that G.B. Shaw explains in Man and Superman? So again, this is a drama of idea let's proceed further to study in brief about the russian dramatist anton chekhov was born in 1860 and died in 1904 anton chekhov was a russian dramatist and he is quite popular in english literature for his literary moment realism he brought realism in the drama the subsequent moment of naturalism also in the drama so this is popular for realism and naturalism his major works 
Now, the Cherry Orchard, published in 1904, Uncle Vanna, Eddie 99, and the Three Sisters in 1901. Let's proceed further to where John's Gosworthy, born in 1867 and died in 1933, John's Gosworthy received the Nobel Prize in Literature for his beautiful contribution in literature in 1932. So what are his notable works? The Silver Box in 1906, Joe in 1907, and the most important work, Strive, which published in 1909. So let's have a fleeting glance on his notable work, Strive. Strive was published in 1909. So in the present play, there is a prolonged unofficial strike at a factory. The name of that factory is Trinartha Plate Tin Works. The factory's owner, John Anthony, refuses to compromise and the workers are forced to endure, the, in, endure months of hardship. So this is the tussle between what we say capitalism and workers, common workers. So this is strike, in fact, which focuses the impact and the consequences and the result of strike on the common people. How common people suffer due to the strike have been very beautifully presented here by John Galsworthy with a notable work in English literature. Let us turn towards the next presentation here. J. M. Singh was born in 1871 and died in 1909. So his full name, Edmund John Mullington Singh, was an Irish playwright. He belongs to Ireland, having the capital, Dublin. So his major works are In the Shadow of the Glean, published in 1903. Riders to the Sea is a notable work, which published in 1904. The Well of the Saints in 1905 and The Tinker's Wedding in 1909. So I request you to remember Riders to the Sea, which published in 1904, written by Jan Singh. So let's have a fleeting glance on the theme in brief. So Maurya has lost her husband and five sons to the sea. In the beginning of this play, Nora and Kathleen receive word from the priest that a body, maybe their brother, Michael, has washed up on the shore on the Irish mainland north of their home island in Inisman. Bartley is planning to sail to Connemara to sell a horse and ignores Maurya's plea to stay. He leaves gracefully. Maurya predicts that by nightfall she will have no living sons and her daughters chide her for sending Bartley off with an ill word. Maurya goes after Bartley to blaze his voyage and Nora and Kathleen receive clothing from the drowned corpse that confirms that it was Michael. So Maurya returns home, claiming to have seen the ghost of Michael riding behind Bartley and begins lamenting the loss of the man in her family to the sea. After which some villagers bring in the cause of Bartley. He has fallen off his horse into the sea and drowned. So most of the family members, the male members have been lost in the sea and she has been left alone at the end of this work, the Riders to the Sea. So this work presents the adventurous sea life of the common people who struggles for the bread and butter on the sea. So is the reason this work is quite notable in English literature. Let's proceed further towards Eugene O'Neill who was Born in 1888 and passed away from this world in 1953. Eugene O'Neill was the first American playwright to win Nobel Prize for Literature in 1936. 
So his notable works are The Emperor Jones in 1920, The Harry Ape in 1922, Desire Under the Arms in 1925, and Morning Becomes Electra in 1931. So remember one thing that Eugene O'Neill received Nobel in 1936. An important dramatist during modern era. So next person is a T.S. Eliot, Thomas Turns Eliot, was born in 1888 and died in 1965. His British American poet, Thomas Turns Eliot, received Nobel Prize in Literature in 1948 for his notable poetry. His notable dramas are The Rock, published in 1934, Murder in the Cathedral is a poetic drama, the notable one, which published in 1935. The next is Family Reunion in 1939, The Cocktail Party in 1949, The Confidential Clerk in 1953, and The Elder Statement in 1959. So I request you to remember the chronology, the dates of all the dramas, because this question has been asked many times in the examination. And especially focus on Murder in the Cathedral, which published in 1935. So let's have a fleeting glance on the same drama by Thomas Turns Eliot, which published in 1935. Let's have a fleeting glance on the theme of this drama. So Murder in the Cathedral portrays the assassination of the Archbishop Thomas Beckett in Canterbury Cathedral during the reign of Henry II in 1117. Four tempsters try to bribe Bucket away from his religious cause. They try to prevent him, but he was adamant, he was firm. And this is the conflict between kingship and religious power. The first storm reminds him of his youth and his friendship with the King Henry. The second storm reminds him that before he was Archbishop, he was Lord Chancellor, enjoying much political power. The third storm tries to persuade Thomas Becket to stir up a revolt against the king. And the fourth one, Becket, reminds him with his martyrdom. Becket rejects all of these for various reasons. Even the last one also. At the end of this drama, you know, eventually the four knights, they're written and they finally kill Thomas Bucket, Leaving the chorus to mourn his death while also praising his act of martyrdom. And at the end of the drama, they try to justify themselves to the audience for the death, for the murder, for killing of Archbishop Thomas Bucket. So this is the beautiful creation in English literature. I request you to study in detail for the sake of understanding and for the sake of exam. Let's proceed further, my dear friends. The next work, Bertrand Bachet, 1898 up to 1956 is the time span is a famous German playwright known as the father of epic theatres. So, Bertrand is famous as the father of epic theatre in literature. So, what are his modern classic plays? Let's have a fleeting glance on it. The Three Penny Opera in 1928, The Mother in 1931, The Exception and the Rule, which published in 1933, Mother Courage and Her Children in 1941, The Good Person of the Says One in 1943, and The Resistable Rise to Arthur We in 1958 are the notable work of this famous dramatist. And he is known as the father of epic theatre in English literature. Remember this. The next important figure in modern drama is Samuel Bacate, born in 1906 and died in 1989. He received Nobel Prize in Literature in 1969. This writer, this dramatist is quite popular for writing absurd dramas in literature. 
So I want to mention here the two famous dramas here. The first one is entitled Waiting for Godot and the second is End Game. So Waiting for Godot has been asked many times in the examination. So let's have a fleeting glance on the theme in brief of Waiting for Godot written by Samuel Bucket. Two men, the names of Vladimir and Estragon, meet near a tree. They converse on various topics and reveal that they are waiting there for a man and that name of that man is Godo. While they wait, the two other men enter on the scene. Bozo is on his way to the market to sell his slave Lucky. He pauses for a while to converse with Vladimir and Istragan. Lucky entertains them by dancing and thinking and Pozo and Lucky leave. After Pozo and Lucky leave, a boy enters and tells Vladimir that he is the messenger from Godo. He tells Vladimir that Godo will not be coming tonight but that he will surely come tomorrow. So Vladimir asks him some questions about Godo and the boy departs. He leaves from the scene. After his departure from the scene, Vladimir and Istragan they decide to leave, but they do not move as the curtain falls. The next night, you know, Vladimir and Istragan again meet near the same tree to wait for the same Godo. Lucky and Pozo enter again. But this time, you know, Pozo is blind and Lucky is dumb. Pozo does not remember meeting the two men the night before and the leave and the Vladimir and Istragan continue to wait. Shortly after, the boy enters and once again tells Vladimir that Godo will not be coming tonight again. He insists that he did not speak to Vladimir yesterday. After he leaves, Istragan and Vladimir decide to leave, but again they do not move as the curtain falls, ending the play finally. So, you know, such dramas are meant for intelligent audience. They are not meant for common, common people, common audience. So they are highly thought-provoking. And so is the reason they are absurd drama in English literature. So I request you to see this. Let us turn towards the next dramatis here in this series. And he is the Romanian French playwright. Eugene Ionesco was born in 1909 and last year to 1994. He is a Romanian French playwright who is known for a theater of absurd. And as I told you, absurdism, you know, action is not important. The ideas are important. They are highly thought provoking drama, as I told you already. And the main theme of absurdism is uh, lack of communication, alienation, separation from man, from this earthly world. And such themes have been presented. So let's have a fleeting glance on the select plays of Eugene Ionesco. The first is Keeler, published in 1958. The second, Rhinosaurus, in 1959. The next one is Exit the King, in 1962. Stroll in the Air, in 1962. And Hunger and Thirst, in 1964, are the select notable works. Let us turn towards the next dramatist here in this series. And he is Tennessee Williams. Was born in 1911 and died in 1983. So Tennessee Williams was an American dramatist whose plays reveal a world of human frustration in which sex and violence underlie an atmosphere of romantic gentility. 
So his famous plays are The Glass Menagerie, published in 1944, and the second one is entitled as A Streetcar Named Desire, which published in 1947. So are the notable works written by Tennessee Williams. So let's have a fleeting glance on the theme of A Streetcar Named Desire, which is quite symbolic, which published in 1947, a notable work. A Streetcar Named Desire is a play by Tennessee Williams written during the period of change in America after Second World War. In short, it is about a woman, Blanche Device, a former Southern Ballet who comes to live with her sister and her sister's husband. So, in Countering a series of personal losses, she leaves her once prosperous situation to move into a shabby apartment in New Orleans rented by her younger sister and brother-in-law. Unfortunately, when she joins them to leave, her brother-in-law rapes her and the sister is not ready to support her. She is a practical-minded woman and supports her husband instead of the sister. And it creates confusion in the mind of the main character Blanche Device. She eventually loses her grip on reality as she fails to get what it is she most desires and so the title is quite symbolic and significantly given here a street car named desire so desire means passions desire stands for the what we say materialistic life the notable work of Tennessee Williams so let's proceed further my dear friends the next work the next important dramatist, Arthur Miller, who was born in 1915 and passed away from this world in 2005. So Arthur Miller was the most important American dramatist of the post-World War II. So his select works are All My Sons, which he published in 1947. And the second notable work is entitled as a Death of Salesman, which published in 1949. So let's have a fleeting glance on Death of Salesman, which published in 1949 as an important work in English literature. Uh, this question has been asked in uh, the examination. So Arthur Miller's play, Death of Salesman, addresses the loss of identity of the common American person. And a man's inability to accept change within himself and the society around. Willie Loman, who is the protagonist of this play. Willie Loman means he is the Loman who always wills high in the life symbolically. He is a common salesman, has two sons. One is happy. Another is beef, but happy is always unhappy, never happy. And beef, a famous football player, proves to be unsuccessful in his life. So both the brothers, they find it difficult to settle in life. At the end of this play, finally, Willie Loman decides that the insurance money can be beneficial for his family so he commits suicide by dashing his car to a tree so that the insurance amount will benefit his two sons happy and beef to get settled in the life. And this is the common dream of every American person that he should have a bungalow and a car of his own. So, this is not the death of Willie Loman. The death of Salesman is actually, symbolically speaking, is the death of every common American person. At the end of this play, Linda has troubles dealing with her husband's death. She doesn't cope up with the reality. 
she does not accept his death and keeps waiting for him to return from his business trip so this is about the dreams shattering dreams of the common american man the most beautiful and realistic play written by arthur miller entitled date of a salesman and it is not the story of a com common american man this is the story of every common man in the world so a very notable work in literature i request you to see this for the sake of exam without wasting the time my dear friends let us turn towards the next dramatis the modern dramatis here in this series his name is john as bar bar in 1929 and died in 1994 john as bar was a american playwright and a film producer who is quite popular for his writing look back in anger which published in 1956 So I request you to remember this work of Jonas Bar has been asked many times in the examination of Nat and Sait. So let's have a fleeting glance on this work. Look back in anger which published in 1956 actually Osborne's play was an attack on the restrictiveness and division of the 1950s England. A yell of frustration and dis contentment in the heart of the english people the play explores the relationship between intelligent but dissatisfied unhappy protagonist of this drama jimmy potter the original angry young man and this is the story of his wife alison they play the game of what we say rabbit and squirrel the conflict between the upper class and the lower class has been presented here and look back in anger in very beautiful way in the post war period after world war second in england a great change in the social values took place so this is the frustration of the common man when after the second world war the people almost most of the people they lost their job they did not have any work and so is the reason they feel highly disillusioned and disappointed highly frustrated and the same frustration has been expressed in look back in anger in 1956 so this is the common man's frustration with john osborne tries to portray through this work and so from this point of view my dear friends this work is quite remarkable in english literature so please note this let us turn towards the last slide thank you very much so we are going to finish this presentation prior over time but before to end this i request you to see the work of harold pinter the most remarkable absurd dramatist who is the recipient of the nobel prize in 2006 for his contribution in modern drama one more important figure here i remember is a tom stoppard he is quite popular for rosen crank and gilden burns are dead so this work has been asked in the examination of tom stopper so don't forget to search tom stopper and the remaining dramatist which we discuss here in this presentation today so let's stop today thank you very much for being with me always very positively i am waiting for your comments in the comment box if there is any improvement so thank you very much my dear friends have a nice time god bless you all let's have a fruitful result in the examination let's visit tomorrow for the for a new with a new presentation on post modern drama have a nice time jai hind